Hello, this is Pete, or Kenshin1913, along with... Mom. And this is another Cooking with Kenshin1913. What are we cooking today? Acorn squash. Okay, so here's our acorn squash. I'm sure many people have seen this in the grocery store near all of the sweet potatoes and butternut squash and, and uh, um, yams and so forth. And probably look at it and say, oh, it, well, it's very nice. It's a nice decoration for the fall. Um, but they're not really sure what to do with it. Mm. And that's what happened to me many years ago. And so I wasn't really sure um, how to prepare it. And then I um, ended up finding out that it's quite easy. And um, you just bake it, and then I'll give you a couple of options. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it. And you gotta be very careful, because this is another one like, um, if you saw the, our video spaghetti of the squash. spaghetti squash, um, the outer skins are very tough. Right. So we're just trying to get, because you don't have to peel this. No, it's very similar to the spaghetti squash, except in this aspect, we're not actually going to be microwaving it. It kind of reminds you of like a weird pumpkin. And so it's cut in half. And we're also going to do uh, very similar to what I had showed you with the acorn squash and cleaning it out. Oh, I'm sorry, the spaghetti squash. So you're gonna take your spoon and just clean it up with the edge of the spoon. Mm -hmm. So you're getting all those seeds and um, that inner part that's very stringy. Right, similar to a pumpkin. Like if yep. you're cleaning out a pumpkin as well, if you're gonna use that for anything. I don't really like cook a lot with like actual pumpkin. Like if you if you go pick a pumpkin, I usually always use canned pumpkin. Yeah, it, although you can uh, make lots of things with the with the pumpkin. Yeah. So this recipe actually my mom made many years ago, and uh, it's been a staple when we do spaghetti or um, acorn squash. I keep thinking of the wrong thing, but anyways, yeah, it's pretty much like a staple. Like whenever we get some acorn squash, my mom usually takes it, and we're gonna. Well, so this this is gonna be different than the spaghetti squash because we're actually gonna roast it in the oven. Yeah, you could you could roast. I think we did mention the spaghetti squash. You right. could roast that as well, um, but this is not going to like when when you go to cut into it, it's not going to uh, come all apart right. like spaghetti. Yeah. So usually what I do, and, and these are great because they're like their own little bowls. And so if you're having guests over, um, you could actually, you know, give them one half of this each, mm -hmm. um, which would be really cute. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, um, I had washed the outside and now we're all set with the inside. So one of the things that I'm just going to tell you ahead of time and then we'll show you after, um, I'm going to put this on a lined cookie sheet. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to turn it upside down like that and we're going to put it in the oven and let it start to uh, cook, bake. Yeah, so like in the 350 degree oven for how long do you think? Like um, it, it's probably about 40 minutes or so, or until the inside is nice fork tender. Right. Um, the other thing that you could do if, if you wanted to, because I've seen people do this also, is that you can take your knife and just gently kind of score it a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, and then you can actually put your um, spices and um, flavoring in right now. Right and then bake it, but of course you're not going to turn it upside down because everything's going to fall out of it. But I found that if I uh, part bake it um, first and then flip it over, it, it seemed to um, come better. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. the way I did it, but you don't have to do it that way. Right. And, what, and what flavors are we going to be using? So what we're going to be doing when we flip it over, we're going to put a, a little pat of butter, or you can take some softened butter and rub it on, on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, remember, this is going to be pretty warm. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> I'm going to use some brown sugar, either light or dark brown sugar. And I'm going to sprinkle that over the inside of it as well. I then sprinkle some um, nutmeg and um, ground cinnamon. I actually put a little bit of pepper and then uh, the final drizzle is of maple syrup mm -hmm. until it's totally done right. and it it's delicious. Right. You also can do a savory one if you'd like, um, either by using some butter or some olive oil and then putting some different spices that you may want in it, rosemary or uh, an onion spice. Um, so you don't always have to make it uh, a little bit on the sweeter side. Okay, so here we are. We're taking these out of the oven and I'm gonna flip them over. Might be a little tricky. So yeah, you, you can see. You could even you could even flip them before before this, but look, see how nice and soft it is? Or tender. Not this point. I'm just gonna do a little scoring so mm -hmm. that all the flavors get into the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to do my butter first. Yeah, and now after you put this in there, how about how long do you think you gotta let it cook? Well, since this is almost all cooked. Right. So not not long at all. Right. Now, as I mentioned before, you can do this right from the beginning if you choose to. Okay. Yeah, so acorn squash is good. I, we usually have it in the fall. You know, it's usually when you get it in season and it's very good that way. And yeah, you, you like butter. Okay. I'm going to put a little cinnamon. And probably about a tablespoon or a teaspoon. Yeah, you kind of, it's kind of actually, I remember when I first ate it, I was like, oh, this is kind of like pumpkin pie. And my mom's like, yeah, it's similar. It's similar. Actually, if you don't have these spices and you have pumpkin pie spices, you can just use that. Yeah. So I just put a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit of nutmeg. Nutmeg's kind of strong. Yeah. Brown sugar. A little brown sugar. And remember what I said, you can actually make these savory as well. Uh -huh. Just put a little um, olive oil or butter, whatever you prefer, and um, salt, pepper, right. and some, if you'd like, uh, some kind of um, actual spice. And now we're just going to drizzle just a little, a little, little bit. Just a little drizzle. Of maple syrup. Just a drizzle of maple syrup. And remember I had said I do a little bit of pepper, pepper on top. And that's you, it. We're you gonna can actually put, it, put a little salt too. But. We're going to put that back in the oven uh, for another little bit. Like 10 minutes. 10 let, 10 them, minutes. let everything start to uh, cook in the oven. Yeah, caramelize and all that. They're out of the oven. You could see it, it browned even a little bit more. Mm -hmm. The brown sugar and everything is, is in it. I'm gonna put them on a plate. Right. One of the things I wanted to tell you and I forgot to, um, after we cut, after we cleaned the, the squash, you could have taken it and cut it in slices and laid it on your um, cookie sheet to bake. And then you could have drizzled the same thing so that instead of having this little bowl. cup, little bowl, you would have had individual slices. All right, so here's our butternut squash. I mean, our acorn squashes. So many squashes. I, I can't. I don't want to have it drop. But you'll see a picture of it. So I'm gonna take from the center where there's a lot of sweet goodness. And uh, careful, it's really hot. Yeah. Go ahead and explain what you want to do with it. Um, one of the other things that I was thinking about is if you don't want to make it um, on the sweet side, mm -hmm. you could actually um, make like a, a, a buttery rice and put it inside and bake it. Hot. 
So there's there's many different different mm. ways. Any way that you would use a yellow squash, mm -hmm. you can you can do it. Yeah, this is really good. I mean, you get a lot of nice flavor from the squash on the. I like I like the outside. The inside's good too, but you get more flavor because you get the actual squash. Not that the brown sugar is bad, but it's, it's good. And it's a it's a great recipe to do something as a side. Mm -hmm. And it's just something really good to have it if you see it in the store and you're like, I don't know how to cook that. Well, now you do. So I've been Pete for Kenshin 1913, along with... Mom. This has been another Cooking with Kenshin 1913. Enjoy and happy eating.